This is The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wilds, and this is Recent Reviews. So with recent reviews, what I always wanted this show to be about was less so about a more analytical critiquing about what made a game good or bad and giving a specific score, and basically just have a general conversation you would have with your friends when they get a new game and you ask them simply, how is it? Just a simple, you know, yes or no, uh, what's good, what's bad about it, very often kind of first in person type stuff. That being said, I always tend to try and at least beat the games. Uh, on the off chance that maybe the second half is a little rougher, or it becomes a bit long, or the gameplay becomes boring near the end or whatever. That being said, with Zelda, I am close to two weeks after launch, and I have just be beat my first dungeon, uh, my first Divine Beast. So, yeah, that goes to show the testament of how big this game is and how like much there is to do in it. So, yeah, maybe I'll do a follow-up for this, but first off-the-cuff impression, absolutely buy this game. Just hands down, just flat up, yeah, there's no, well, maybe if you like, no, just buy this game. It's great, it is fantastic, it is absolutely deserved with all the praise and the hype that's been getting. But I guess to talk about it a little bit more, uh, the thing I like is just how open this world is, just how big and expanded, just all the, the, the insane amount of stuff you can do. Uh, you've got, like, weapon collecting, you've got all the, uh, tribes with each with their own, have their own puzzles, and, and I like the fact that it, the game starts you off, uh, the Great Plateau, you can probably beat it, like, maybe, uh, 20, 30 minutes, uh, probably 45, but you, you can beat it fairly fast, and then after that, it's just like, that, the game does not really give you any other tools, all those tools you had from the beginning of the game, that's it, you can use it to manipulate the environment however you want, to solve puzzles, to solve, uh, to create different like ways around obstacles, all that stuff. So I really like the fact that you don't really un it's it's not like traditional other Zelda games where you like you do this temple, you get this, like you have everything right off the bat and it's like, alright, go, go explore, like figure out what you want. And I love that it just it's that sense of like you the game's just a like, go. Just figure it out, and uh, so I would just be wandering around, and then I would find a shrine, and then I'd find an enemy base, and I'd find a, 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 like a puzzle in the world, and then I would find like a village, and then the village people would give me side quests, and then I would do those side quests, and they would like, uh, oh, like lead me to stuff like the, the cooking, or the horse riding, or the enemy base, or just the game. There's so many different aspects of it. The cooking is like really great because like it is as simple and as deep as you want it. Like on a base level, if you just want heart, you could just cook everything like raw. Just cook an apple, cook meat, cook bananas, whatever. That'll make give it a little bit of food. But again, if you want to go into that like expertise of like what ingredients combine with this, and then like all right, well cool, I can make this recipe. Or if I put this ingredient in, it'll give me extra uh, stat, like it'll give me extra stamina or extra attack or extra defense. Or if I eat this, like it'll give me uh, like keep my heat up or keep my heat down. Also, I love that aspect. Like you have to uh, wear the different clothes. Where like again, I kind of just got lucky and found uh, this one piece of armor. I don't really remember where I got it, but yeah, like. Uh, so I have a, a, a snow jacket, basically, but yeah, like, there, I, if I had explored some other different way, I could have been, like, in the Alps without, like, any protection, and, like, I just, that's the thing I love most about this game, is just the fact that, like, I put all of my, um, every, every time you clear a dungeon, you get, uh, like, basic experience points, and I put all my experience points into stamina, so I had, like, I, like, like, 10, 20 hours in, I had like basically a halfway or like a 75% maxed out stamina, but I had like two hearts. So I could like climb all the cliffs and like run forever and glide and do all this great stuff, but I was dead in like one shot. And then I was like, all right, well cool, let me do more shrines so I can get my health up and then badly fights easier. But like you could absolutely play the whole game with just the three base hearts and like upgrade all your other stats. Or you could have put them all into your hearts and then they like, have no stamina. I, I love that aspect of just like people are just like uh, listening to it, kind of like again, like Minecraft or Metal Gear Solid. 
these big open sandbox games that really let you just play however you want. I just love hearing how other people are exploring and experimenting and all the different tricks and like, secrets and people are finding out. Not just in terms of like glitches or easter eggs or stuff, like all the stuff within the context of the game. Like for example, I, I was on a, a mountain and uh, it was storming and I kept getting electrocuted, like just exploding in a burst of lightning and I didn't know what was going on and I kept dying and dying and dying and then I figured out was that I had this like metallic sword and a metallic shield and a metallic bow and uh, they were conducting electricity and the game never tells you that. After I figured out that, people have done the experiments where like you can use uh, uh, the the metal stuff to, uh, to to complete circuits and other puzzles later. And even like later on, I did a mission where uh, this woman was saying this stable was being struck by lightning and she doesn't know why, I knew immediately it was, had to be something on the top of the roof and boom, I go up there and there's a metal axe in the roof. Very simple, but like I guess if you didn't know that, you'd just be like, I don't understand what's going on. You'd be like trying to figure out if there's some secret. There's, God, like I could just, I, I'm getting kind of distracted here because I'm just like, there's the, uh, the, the memory like missions where you have to go to specific like locations or just give you a picture and you have to go and at first you're like this could literally freaking be anywhere but as you play the game more you're like I, I've i seen that mountain ridge before it's like okay well this is like on that's like grass and this is sand okay so the sand and the grass meet at this place so it's gotta be along this coast here area and like I like, and then you're in the forest and you're like it, it, the game is just like it, it it there's so many different things like little things to do like hell one of my favorite uh, examples the camera you get the camera at the start of the game and I was just like this is fucking useless this is dumb why would I ever want this, this is pointless and then I don't even remember why but I did I took a picture of the enemies and it turns out that uh, you can catalog it like uh, Bioshock where you have to take a picture of every weapon every uh, Herb, every enemy, every chest, every like bow and arrow, and basically just every single thing you can collect in the game. Uh, and it will like expand your encyclopedia. But, and then I did a mission later which basically upgraded my Sheik, uh, Slate, and it turns out that if you've taken a picture of that material, you can then use your upgraded Sheik Slate to like put a, a scan out in the area and find where those like materials are so it can go back to the cooking where like if you need a, a stand up potion or you need more of the fire up or like the uh, thunder resistance if you need a specific type of thing you can use that for cooking and then uh, another thing like side tangent in terms of all of that was I was uh, I, I read how there are posters with recipes in the game so at first you're like, oh, it's annoying that I have to like remember that. Or just use your uh, your camera, just take a picture of it, boom, you have the camera right there in the game. It has a recipe. I I don't know. Maybe the ending sucks. Uh, I've only done like a couple of those uh, memento, like, uh, like forgotten memory type missions. Uh, I enjoy a lot of them. I like the story. They're kind of weaving together. I've only done like three, but I can, I, I, I'm can. seeing these like breadcrumbs being laid out where I'm like, okay, I like the story they're laying out. Uh, I like, I haven't even, uh, I could go fight Ganon right now. I like, I, uh, I definitely want to, for the longest time I saw that bird thing in the sky and I was just like, it was in the distance and I was like, yeah, that's the bird thing in the sky and it's probably the birds but it's not until I get like I'm starting to actually slowly make my way towards it and I'm like oh wait oh like and now I'm like wait how do I get up there like so I just like I said there I, there's so many aspects like the 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 clothes uh dying uh you know the different armor sets uh the, the weapons the fact that like like again, there's a lot of minor nitpicky stuff. Like I said, like again, at least for me right now, you can't die one piece of clothes. You have to do it in a set. Um, your weapons breaking is annoying, but it's like, uh, and, and it does, it does, it, it's annoying, but it's just you know, it's part of game design. That's a kind of a separate conversation. But yeah, it's just like, I, I, and I know something I always joke about with my brother is. Um, you know, these gamers kind of like, oh, it's supposed to be the best game ever and blow my mind and suck my dick and make a sandwich and all that stuff. And uh, often it's like hyperbole. People just kind of overreact and overreact. Um, but I have had those moments. Like, generally and truly, I had 
what I like to call those, like a ratatouille moment. We're at the end of the ratatouille where he eats the food and it's just like, whew, wishes him back to his childhood. I, I've had those moments. I had it with uh, Psychonauts and I had it with uh, Kingdom Hearts uh, and I had it with Ocarina of Time. And I played all those games after, year after, after all the hype and all that. Um, so like even before I had any connection. And this game has not given me that like, whoa! Like, and, but again, like I played this game for like 13 hours, 6 hours, 12 hours, 8 hours. I played it in such long time. I can't play, because this is the definitive like, one more minute, one more minute, one more minute, one more dungeon, one more cooking, okay, one more recipe. So yeah, I could talk about this game for hours, and I probably will do a follow-up video when I actually have beaten this game like 100%, or at least the story mode, but for now, go play, it doesn't matter if it's Wii U, Switch, however you play this, it is absolutely deserves all the hype and all the praise it's been getting, and it absolutely, it, it is definitely my game of the year, and right now, it is like it is shot up to like it, I'm not I'm not ready to declare it number one, but it's definitely in the top three already, and that's even before I finish it.